Hello, new school comic book reviews. Uh, before I get started, I just wanted to uh, throw this out here. It's been pretty, well, let's see here. How do I want to say this? Um, just being involved in, like, you know, comics and watching certain TV shows, it's just kind of been cracking me up just on a private personal note. Uh, seeing these kind of references to like pop music and rock music and stuff that I kind of grew up with during my adolescence in this particular comic here there's an Adam and an Ant reference if you can catch it uh, most cut the cover to this week's Captain Marvel you've got Carol Danvers looking like a cross between um, you know Paul Stanley and David Bowie Allen Sane on um, on the most recent uh, episode of Constantine on NBC, Sex Pistols are being played on the on the rate on the uh, soundtrack. Uh, the most recent issue of The Flash, they're playing uh, a different version of I Ran by Flock of Seagulls during one of the uh, later scenes. Uh, in Gotham, a couple of weeks ago, there's a woman uh, trying out to be a singer, and she's singing this torch song version of Susie and the Banshees, uh, Spellbound, and, um, you know, it isn't deep, but it just cracks me up, because these are, these are things that I grew up with when I was younger, so, as an old guy, I approve. Anyway, on to the comics. Uh, Captain America and the Mighty Avengers, uh, written by... Al Ewing and the art is by Luke Ross. Uh, this is the relaunch of the Mighty Avengers series with uh, Sam Wilson as the new Captain America. Uh, it's okay. It's mostly just set up um, for an, uh, something I think is going to be kind of intriguing. Uh, basically, we just get, uh, we don't see too much of the team. We see Sam flying around uh, as Cap, kind of doing his thing fighting crime but it's kind of interesting because as he's doing so he's complaining about the bleeding hearts and at, by the time you get to the end of the issue it's uh it's kind of apparent that this is all a setup to uh some plot things that are be going on you don't get too much of the rest of the team of the comic all you see really is Luke Cage, uh, his friend DW, and you get to see Spider-Man, who is Peter Parker now, kind of explaining that, yeah, that other Spider-Man you were dealing with, that was Doc Ock disguised as me, but, um, um, yeah, oh, and then you get a pretty interesting fight. Uh, with this uh, kind of B-level character, I'll say C-level character, called the Plunderer. Um, it, like I said, it's a fun comic. It's, uh, it's As far as the story's written, it's pretty tight. comes off as uh, an interesting first chapter. Uh, the only thing about it is the art is a little bit stiff, you know, but it's okay. It's passable, so... Next comic is She-Hulk number 10, written by Soul and art by Paluto. This is the conclusion of the Steve Rogers wrongful death story where Jennifer Walters has to face off against Matt Murdock in court. Uh, I thought it was pretty fun. Uh, I've actually been enjoying the comic. I like the kind of lighthearted tone. Um, I like the cartoony art. I guess She-Hulk is going to be get canceled. Which is which I think is a shame. I really thought it was a uh, brush, a breath of fresh air, um, in a field that these days is so dominated uh, with lots of like meandering events that you know don't go anywhere, and um, and you know grim and gritty stuff that's not com really uh, particularly compelling. Uh, so I thought this was a really fun comic. I thought this was something that Marvel needed on the stands. I think this, I think everybody was, um, I think, I really think it was a worthwhile comic. But, on the other hand, I get it. I get the art was really polarizing for some fans, and um, they really didn't enjoy it. So I don't know if it's going to be relaunched or anything, 
but I think we've got like like um, maybe two or three more issues uh, before this comic gets canceled. But um, but I've been enjoying it, and I'll I'll stick it out for the last um, for the next couple months. Next comic is Captain Marvel, art by I'm sorry, story by Kelly Sue DeConnick and art by David Lopez. I really enjoyed this issue. I thought it was a big improvement over over last issue, which was kind of a letdown. Um, basically, in this issue, this is kind of a sort of a fake rock opera thing going on. It guest stars Leah Cheney. Leah Cheney is this character who's a mutant and she's a pop star and her power is she can teleport almost anywhere and what's going on in this particular story is she is in outer space and she has this arranged marriage to this dude from this other planet so Carol gets involved and tries to uh, help her out um, what's funny about this particular issue is uh, at some point the characters uh, start speaking and the dialogue is all in rhyme so you kinda got like I said this kind of fake rock opera pseudo musical going on and um me personally I thought it was fun I thought it was clever and I thought it worked for the most part uh, like I said I enjoyed it a lot more than the last issue which was kind of a disappointment and I like again I like the light-hearted tone I like um, writers trying to be a little bit clever with what's going on in the comics as opposed to just you know, doom and gloom, smash and fight, or whatever. I like doom and gloom and smash and fights, but I like people trying to do other ideas as well. So, uh, yeah. Um, so far, of the comics I've read, one of my favorites. Next comic book I liked a lot was Captain America number one. Art, uh, story by Rick Remender, art by Stuart Emmerman. Stuart Emmerman, in my mind, is doing some of the uh, best. Uh, artwork of his career, you know. I'm just really digging the guy's uh, pencils and inks, you know. It's a uh, really solid, really great um, uh, figure work, great layouts. I like the expressions he's able to do. Great uh, work with the shading and and, and, and everything. Uh, really kinetic. It just works in a lot of ways that all the uh, a lot of uh, old school superhero comics used to work. Uh, basically, this issue, uh, it's mostly, it's a little bit of setup, not a whole lot of deep, deep characterization. There is some of that going on with the uh, voiceover narration and first person narration that Sam gives, but, uh, but it's really mostly just action packed stuff where Sam and Steve Rogers' adoptive son kind of take on Hydra. Uh, there's a kind of uh, intriguing last page cliffhanger, but uh, but like I said, I dig it. I thought it was really fun, action packed, see to your pants, really um, interesting in seeing what's going to happen next. When I first heard that Sam was going to be taking over as Captain America, uh, I don't want to say I was disappointed, but I kind of was disappointed a little bit. I really wanted Sam to have his own comic book as uh, the Falcon. But, after thinking about it, I kind of get why Marvel probably went this route. I mean, I think we all remember a few years ago where uh, Steve Rogers supposedly died and Bucky took over as Captain America. And Bucky actually gained a lot of fans. I think he did better as Captain America than a lot of people uh, would have initially thought. And, um, you know, he got popular enough that, you know, Marvel spun him off in his own comic. So I'm probably thinking that's the editors or management's uh, reasoning behind having Sam be Captain America for a while. Sam was Captain America uh, in the past, like, I don't know, 10, 10, 12 years ago. It was just for one story arc. But, um, um, ugh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, but yeah, so him being Captain America is, isn't particularly new or groundbreaking or anything like that. But I see them wanting to capitalize off the Falcon's popularity in the movies and things. But I think as we kind of know now, being popular in the movies doesn't always translate to sales in the comic shops. So I think the, I think Marvel probably figured, you know, this is a way we can kind of build them up for 
the people who are going to stay in the shops and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, let's see. Other comic books that I got that I have not read. Finally got a hold of Catwoman uh, 35, the brand new direction issue. This came out like a couple weeks ago. Uh, but yeah, my store was sold out. <laughs> so I finally got it. I haven't gotten around to reading it yet though, but I'm happy that I have it. Also got... Fade Out number three by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Got Velvet uh, number eight by Sean uh, by Ed Brubaker and Steve Epton. And I got this uh, Sleigh Ride from uh, Dark Horse's Brian House line, I guess. I guess it's by uh, Alex D. Campy and R.M. Guerra. I um, haven't read any of these comics yet. If I get to them in the next couple days, maybe I'll put up another video. I'm not too sure how much time I'm going to have because uh, i got to go to work tomorrow. But uh, like I said, if I do get to them and I've got time, maybe I'll do another video. Okay, and I guess that's it. Thank you very much for listening, and you have a good day.